I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now today is the last day of the month of September. Praise God. Now listen. Oh, thank you. Can we call for that daily bread first of all? <laughs> Father, say this with me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, Man. And I pray for you right now that a miracle will happen to ease the burden in your life today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, today is the last day of the month. And every first of the month, like tomorrow is, tomorrow is the first of October, we have a fast 24 hours fasting and prayer meeting. I don't want you to miss this one for anything. Plan, plan for it. Now we're, we're gonna the fasting is gonna start tonight at 12 midnight. You no, know, 12 midnight breaking into tomorrow. So, so we're starting the fast tonight. And we're gonna be praying, and our prayer meeting is gonna be via Zoom. The Zoom link is on the screen, so you can actually join us, set your alarm, and we're gonna be praying for at every watch. And we'll be praying for 40, 45 minutes at every watch. So we're praying, the first prayer meeting is tonight at 12 midnight. And then the, the next one is going to be at 3 a.m. And then at 6 a.m. And then um, 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., which is the last watch of the day, of the 24-hour day. But then we normally round up because it's 24 hour fast. We normally round off at uh, 12 midnight. So our last meeting is going to be at 11.30. I don't want you to miss this. Now, we've got several testimonies coming up from this. I'm telling you the truth. And God is still doing amazing things. So join us. Join us tonight. Join us. Set an alarm on your phone. Make up your mind. Today I'm going to do it and watch the grace of God carry you. Praise God. Now, I was sharing with you yesterday. I said, because very importantly, I don't want you to carry on your life the way you've been carrying it. I mean, it's, if it's been wrong, of course, that's who I'm addressing. Now. If things have not been working out for you, why should you as a child of God be in a situation and you don't know what to do? And then you're running health ask you know, Listen, people come to me for counsel, yeah. People come to me, people come to the office, they call me on the phone, oh look, um, I need counseling. Where this now, there are, there are counseling that is genuine, you see, because you need someone to guide you in certain things. But there are certain things that I throw them back to the Spirit of God. What's your relationship with the Holy Spirit? Because you ought to know these are the easiest things that the Holy Spirit teaches. So how come you don't know? How come he hasn't taught you? So now I'm concerned. Where is your relationship with him? If you're a child of God <clears throat> and you don't have a healthy relationship with the Holy Spirit, hear me. How then do you, how are you assured even? that the heaven will talk about you a part of it. The one who's supposed to dress you up, the one who's supposed to prepare you, you don't have a relationship with him. How do you think he's preparing you? No, no, think about it. Have you, you know, you, you know maybe you're a lady, think about it. You, the day you got married, if you're married, or you're going for an event, or you are or you are the bridesmaid for a wedding or 
whatever you know what i'm talking about and then you get a makeup artist to come make you up do you just keep your face and then they, they finish whatever they are doing and then you stand up and like is it, are you okay are you done yes i'm done okay thank you and then you go you will be concerned I, i'm putting this up you will be communicating with the person and hey, but but why is this giving me this feeling oh okay this is what it is this is oh okay 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 i understand now okay um, let me see let me see what you're doing you look at the mirror it's like okay fine continue and then you there will surely be communication taking place now this person is preparing you for an event and the person came to make you up and as the person is making you up you you are checking if you're okay with this makeup you are checking you know some people when they are done <laughs> making you up you lose yourself you can't even find yourself in the mirror <laughs> now you don't want that praise god some people like it but but naturally you don't want that because the makeup art is not supposed to change who you are it's supposed to enhance who you are praise god so now now i'm talking about there, there's communication going on between the two of so if the holy spirit is the one preparing you for the perfection of jesus or what we call the coming of jesus and you can't say you're in communication with him how then is he preparing you no think about it how do you believe that you will go to heaven when the rapture comes if today you are not enjoying some measure of heavenly life how do you prove that eternal life is at work in you if everything about your life is natural going the same way with an unbeliever you need money you have to struggle to get the money Oh, you have to wait until the salary comes before you get the, get the money to do what you have to do. You, you can't make any withdrawals from your heavenly account. How do you prove that you have an heavenly account? Listen, you just can't continue the way you have been living. Things got to change. You need to prove. You know, we've been sharing contending for the faith that was once delivered. You yourself... Which faith was delivered to you? What have you been carrying? What is the faith? What, what is your faith life? Tr no, truly, what is your faith life? Not assumption. Don't tell me in our church we believe. That's not what we're talking about. You and the Holy Spirit. Where is the Spirit of God in your life? Where? Where is the voice of God in your life? Where is the Spirit of God working in you? You, everybody's falling sick. You, you joined them to fall sick. COVID-19 came. You carried and you suffered terribly. Everything that is going on, you, are, you, are, you just collect it like your own. There must be a difference. There must be a difference. I'm telling you, there must be a difference. You, you need to get upset with a normal life. You need to get upset with struggling. Stop struggling. It's not part of the deal. Listen, it is not, it is not, it is not part of the deal. Stop it. Stop struggling. Why? I've got, did Jesus lie? He said, I will not leave you comfortless. Uh -huh. I will come to you. Okay, how? It says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. Okay, so, and then he says the comforter is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come today. Then your life is still without comfort. Something is wrong. What comfort are we talking about? I'm not just talking about a life of affluence, you know, oh, I have 10 billion in my account. No, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, okay, I need to feed now. There is no money in my bank account. I don't have any food in the house. So what do I do? You know you have someone you can turn to say, Holy Spirit, what do we do about feeding today? And you will hear that voice tell you, go to so -so and so place. Make so, -so and so call. Get to so, -so and so place. And then you say, oh, okay, thank you, Lord. And then you obey. 
food comes and he will never tell you to go beg for food it's not part of the deal begging has never been part of the deal you know what begging is the kind of net this is even between asking and begging begging is the asking that subjects you to some level of humiliation that's begging Meaning you beg, like when you ask, like your life is dependent on this. So if this person decides to say, no, you're finished, you're done for. So it affects the attitude. So there are different kinds of accent. There is the accent, normal accent. Then there is the accent because you know what you're asking for is actually yours. And then there is the accent in borrowing. So you, 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 you ask for something, but you ask in such a way that you shouldn't be refused. So it's called borrowing. So... You say, okay, give me this and I will bring it back in two days. That's borrowing. You're actually asking. But you're asking in such a way that the, you know the person has it. And you know the person is not using it. So you are asking to use it for two days. So you can borrowing can also be, okay, I'm going to pay this amount of money to get this thing. So you're lending that thing from that person. Or you say, okay, borrow me this thing. I'll pay back with interest. You see, you're actually asking. But you're asking in such a way that the person is not supposed to refuse. It's all asking. Now, begging is when you have to bring your life under subjection to that person. Like, I don't have any other option. So please, I beg you, can you give me this thing? And you are ready to do anything to get that person to give you that thing. He has never called us to a beggarly life. Never. Why? You know, the identity crisis a lot of believers face is enormous. And when you talk to believers, you, you wonder, how else do we preach this message that, that these people will understand? Now, if the Lord have not helped me, I will not be telling you these things. Because I look at my life and I see the help of God. And I'm not saying, you see, everything is by grace. But what I'm saying is you have access to that grace as much as everyone else that believes in Jesus Christ. So don't say, eh, God have helped you by grace, so don't be talking like that. No, no. My concern is why you have not taken advantage of that grace the same way others are taking advantage of it. See, there is a baseline. And what is that baseline? You shouldn't be beggarly. You shouldn't be in that situation that you don't know what to do. So you are, you are seemingly helpless. You shouldn't be in that situation. Never. Two days is enough to turn things around. And when I say two days, maybe the first day you didn't understand what was going on. By the second day, you should know that this is the hand of the devil. And you should know when, when to rebuke and you should know when to ask for wisdom. Now, when you rebuke, it leaves. The Bible says resist the devil and he leaves. Not, not in one week's time. Resist him. He leaves. So the moment he leaves, you find your way. Number two, maybe this is not the devil. Maybe I made a mistake. The moment you realize you made a mistake, repent. That's why I said two days is enough. Whatever difficult situation you find yourself in, two days is enough. Now, when I mean difficult situation, I mean something is you're in a bad situation. You're about to be humiliated. You're, two days is enough to change it. Maximum, two days. And you know what? The first thing that changes is you. Don't be waiting for the things to change. You change. The moment you change, you see things in the right perspective. And the moment you do that, every other thing will follow you. Stop crying. Everybody has abandoned me. Oh, can you imagine the situation I found myself? When I used to be, people used to be, people, come on, stop all those talk. Change. Change. That's what I'm saying. Change. How do you change? How do you know you have changed? The richness of your fellowship with the Holy Spirit is what determines the physical quality of the life you live. 
if the if the if your fellowship with the holy spirit is not rich enough we will not find his kind of testimonies in your life if your your fellowship with him is rich we will see the richness expressed in the quality of life that you live brothers and sisters god has called us to the highest quality of life and that quality speaks of contentment but it doesn't speak of suffering this is what you need to change the quality of your relationship with the holy spirit that's what needs to change and i read it to you in proverbs chapter 1 verse 23 if you will receive his reproof see even right now many of you is reproving you right now if you will receive his reproof and turn from it he will pour out his spirit on you and when he pours out his spirit he, he will cause you to know his word and that's what brings the change remember he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their troubles my time is up today listen i want to see you tonight at 12 noon the information is on the screen the zoom link is on the the, uh, the user id is on the screen join us don't 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 make that mistake of just sleeping join us praise god i'll see you tonight god bless you bye bye